Hi all. Good morning, good evening, everyone across uh, uh, the borders joined for the Red Team Security Summit. Yes, uh, we are having an interesting uh, talk today. Secure the application catch and fix bugs early. For this session, we have the respected uh, Manoj Gopinath sir. He is a chief chief operating officer at Green Method. So he will be talking about uh, the uh, the session. I mean, uh, the secure the application catch and uh, fix bugs early. So I am giving this platform to uh, Manoj sir. Manoj sir, welcome to the Red Team Security Summit. The stage is yours. Thank you, JSL, for that kind and wonderful introduction. Um, can somebody confirm if you can hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, JSL, once again for that wonderful introduction. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I presume it has been a long, long day for you uh, with some wonderful insights into the security. I myself had uh, a chance to listen to a few of them. I will. I know, as as I said, it's a long day. I'll try to keep it interesting and not too intense for you because it's it's late in the evening for most of you, I believe. Um, I mean, I don't have to repeat my name. My I'm Manoj Gopinath. Uh, I mean, I'm chief operating officer with Green Method. So basically, what are we going to talk about today? I mean, I'll try to uh, talk about the application security in general, why it's important to catch early and fix early, and let's hope that uh, we can go. I mean leave today's session with some good takeaways. Uh, the agenda, we are split into three parts. Um, the application security problems, we will address three of them. Then we'll go into the application pro problems, why? Why these problems occurred in the first place? And the third part is we'll see how to address this, uh, these problems. Um, again, uh, when I say address these problems, uh, we don't have uh, any silver bullets or magic wands here. Um, but uh, uh, we will see how best uh, an organization within its limited constraints uh, will be able to address uh, address issues. Uh, I'm, uh, I started a little bit of myself and my organization. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession uh, or by education. Let me, let me say that, rephrase that. And I began my career in a chemical industry and then moved into information technology about 25 years back. I'd worked in India, uh, the US, and UK uh, before uh, moving to UAE in 2004. Uh, Dubai is virtually home now. Uh, I had, uh, I've been heading green matter technologies uh, since 2013, and before coming into security in the IT field, I was more into development. So for me, I have a bit of an insight into the, I was on the other side of the fence as well. Uh, and today's discussion is to see how that fence can be um, uh, removed and we all work together. <laughs> um, Green Method is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, I've been, I joined Green Method in 2013 and been heading it since then. Uh, Green Method is a special information information security consulting organization. Uh, we have a well-established client base in the region, some of the largest banks uh, and largest uh, government and non-government entities uh, in the country are our are, uh, are customers. We've been around for 12 years and uh, we are, and we do have a handful of customers outside UAE as well. Uh, even within the information security area, there are a few areas where we uh, uh, emphasize on, where we specialize in, and uh, application security is uh, definitely one of them. The problems. Let's let let let's address mm -hmm. them. Let's go through them. Uh, most large organ enterprises and medium ones today are effectively software companies. Uh, any company is a software company. Even today, when you when you even our interaction is because somebody had to set up set up a software together, right? Even though it's a it's a training company, so it's it's not just uh, what you call the the the, the big guns like uh, the, the the big names that you that you hear about. Even a small entity. Uh, it has effectively become a software company uh, to a certain extent. Um, there are there are banks now which are uh, uh, moving more and more into digital, and uh, there are digital only banks which are headed by uh, no longer by uh, what do you call technology, uh, uh, no no longer by the the financial whisk whiskids or the or the uh, or, or or the or the bankers themselves, 
or the marketing people, they're headed by technologists. I mean, um, we have instances where uh, CEOs have, uh, I mean, grown up to become the, um, or CIOs have become the uh, CEOs of the company. And then you have these neo digital banks. They're just purely digital banks. They're set up invariably by technologists. So, and it's, 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 it's purely software. So that's a transformation that, that, that we see. So effectively, any company in the, in the, in the world is now effectively a software company. And there's a, a bit of a, what do you call, uh, 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 how they developed. Uh, we'll come to this later, but this, this slide is important. Uh, a portion of it is internally developed. Some of they do follow outsource development. They acquire packages, uh, some open sources available, and on-demand SaaS uh, is growing in importance. And we have the mobile apps. Uh, this doesn't total up to 100 because there's a lot of overlap. And all this creates a security problem. I mean, applications are increasingly attacked. Uh, in, in fact, it's the most attacked. Uh, 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 the most of the uh, frequent pattern is, 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 is confirmed to application security breaches. And, uh, and the traditional defenses are failing. I mean, the SIM and the malware and the tools are not stopping these type of attacks. What do we do? The problem is that it is the engine of innovation. Now, most of the stuff is static, but whereas if you see application layer, that is where all the innovation happens. Every day, new changes, new platforms, uh, uh, new innovations, new change, new requirements uh, are, are coming into play, and, and 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 the business comes up with new problems and uh, uh, or new requirements, and, and and the developers are running, and the software development division is, is running to uh, to meet those. Uh, new changes, and they're coming up with wonderful ideas and wonderful solutions. But what happens in the in the, in the problem is that it, it, it layers, since because of the change of innovation, that is where all the vulnerabilities are, or substantial both of the vulnerabilities are, are, are occurring. It's obvious. How vulnerable are, are these applications? Uh, uh, the study found, this is a very, very recent study, 76% uh, of the applications had flaws in it. And about 66% had OVASP flaws in it, and about 60% had SAN flaws in it, and uh, about 24% had high severity flaws in it. Some more of them, um, very surprising. And in fact, it's a, I mean, in, in today's age, in 2020, if this is happening, it's, 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 it's quite shocking. I mean, 35% had hard coded passwords, 32 had SQL injections in it. 28% had open redirect, and a humongous 50% had cross-site scripting. And where are the vulnerabilities present? Uh, you have, as you know, you have the first party code and the second party code is there, third party code is there. About 69% was found in the first party code and about 31% was, third, uh, when I say first party code is a code that a developer builds, uh, he writes. And uh, the 31% comes from third party libraries, which is more surprising because, you know, these libraries are used by multiple organizations and we have no I mean, mechanism of testing it. So we just add it, assuming that it is, it's, it's, it's secure. And uh, substantial portion is, is, is coming out of that. A couple of, uh, I thought we should, I should broach on a, a couple of high impact, uh, uh, what do you call, High impact vulnerabilities. Uh, the uh, Equifax ones. It's, it's a it's a large financial organization based in uh, uh, based out of uh, US. Uh, there was a, a massive breach uh, which was caused by an open source library, uh, and uh, it had a it had a very severe vulnerability. I mean, a, a, a severe uh, vulnerability exposed and. Uh, uh, the, the the cost of uh, the cost to the company was more than two billion dollars. If they're not bankrupt because they're so large, so they had tools in place, they had processes in place. Still, it went wrong. What, what, what would have happened? Another one, some of you must have heard, is British Airways. I mean, all of us have used uh, at least most of us around have used uh, some sort of a I mean a, a website to, to to book a travel website to book our tickets or a hotel or whatever. And British Airways is a reputed airlines, and uh, through a silly flaw, about 400 uh, people's uh, vulnerabilities were, I mean, sensitive information were, were hacked. I mean, these are credit card details and CVV numbers. 
and they were substantially they faced substantial fine by the regulator, local regulator, and about uh, 20 million pounds of fine on them. They were lucky to get away with it, I would say. And these are not companies uh, without any problems in play. These are massive companies with with very mature uh, uh, security systems in place. Uh, uh, the the, 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 the top-notch developers in the world or development companies in the world manage the systems. Uh, they have consultancies, you name it, I don't want to name them, but you name the top consultancies. They have with them trying to secure their applications and their uh, ecosystems in general. Still things go wrong. Now, why does this happen? One of the reasons is the speed of release. Uh, 43% of the developer organization deploy code continuously. It's, it's a daily process. You mentioned earlier why how the innovation happens. The, 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 some of you who are in the development world, you know, the, the, they have they don't sleep. I mean, they, they're continuously coding, they're continuously dealing with, they got night deadlines, and they have to meet with all these documentation um, apart from coding, they have to think, they deliver, and on top of it, they, it's, it's a continuous development for them, 43%. So invariably, they're not able to, security is not able to catch up. And 41% deploy between one day and once a month. Inefficient processes. 50% uh, of the developer organizations find that the, 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 by the time they get to the uh, they they get to know the vulnerability, it's already merged with their test environment. So as a result, there's a significant delay between when the code happens, when they uh, the development happens. You see, you saw in the earlier slide that it's it's a continuous it's a continuous release cycle. And then you get a there's, a, there's a big disconnect when you find the vulnerability very, very late in the cycle. Developers are not empowered. I mean, the, the focus is on finding vulnerability and not on fixing. I, anybody, some of you are on the security side, you know the, the kind of reports you deliver. And if you're on the developer side, you know the disconnect between uh, the, 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 the report that is devel delivered by the security and how the, uh, the development views it. Developers have a limited knowledge in security. And um, uh, the, the people who come out of these uh, organize, I mean, come out of the, uh, the, the, the universities with a four-year degree or a five-year degree, uh, they barely know, they are barely taught anything on security. I mean, the software coders, they, they, they come out of the, uh, even the reputed schools as, as good programmers, but there's barely any mention about security. It's, it's, the, the, the subject is it's, 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 it's ghost only in periphery. And that to general security, they, they 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 hardly have any insight into how what an application security does. So it, it's a shame that the disconnect between the industry and the uh, and the and the and the academia it's it's, it's appalling. I hope uh, uh, some step is taken in those direction uh, to do that. So as a result, what happens? Many a time they end up in other organization to to boost up their skills, boost up their skills. So you saw some of you uh, who are attending would have done the same. And then. The, even after uh, they, they come to an organization, they, they rarely do you have a proper training program within the organization uh, to, 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 to train them. They, they just uh, uh, put a pen for themselves in most, most cases. And the training invariably is given as some sort of a compliance requirement as an afterthought. So we have this two silos here, you have the developers who generate, through the security team who, who generates the, uh, the application security reports and uh, the developers who see it and trying to, they, they are not able to make a head or tail of it. They, 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 this is a surprising slide even today. I mean, I've been watch. I mean, I've been, I've been monitoring this over since 2010, and about 86 billion is spent on securing networks and endpoints, but only 700 million is secure is spent on securing applications. This has for Gartner study in 2015. Uh, so that's less than one person. I don't think it has changed much over the years in 2019 and 2020. So for some reason, uh, we, we another study, the, the investment on application security is rather limited. Despite all the problems, all the innovations we spoke about earlier and the and the, the rate in which they are running, and that's opening opening up in, uh, opening up all these vulnerabilities to the uh, outside world. And the, at the same time, the, the spend on it is very, 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 very limited. Now, some of you are in the industry. Some of you are in the uh, uh, are budding. Uh, 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 guys, trying to get into are, are you still in the academia? So, what does your application security program look like? I mean, um, are you on the left side? I mean, ignore the problem. Let's go ahead. We are a small entity. Nobody bothers. Or are you on the right side? I mean, which is uh, you put a huge roadblock at the end of the uh, a, a big gate at the end of the development cycle and say, 
uh, and, and, and block everything uh, at that point. So what happens now? Like, um, uh, as I mentioned, you are on a, on a tight cycle to deliver. You are, uh, 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 you have a, you have a delivery date, which is like December 30th and then December 15th, uh, or first, first of December, you are given, you get the vulnerability, vulnerability report. What are you going to do about it? So the, the committee joins and gets a decision. Okay. We have committed to the management that we have to release a, release a software. Okay, how long does it take to fix it? Uh, I fix it probably three to four months, five months, if on a best case scenario. So what do we do? Okay, let's bypass it and and and, and do a do a what you call a hail mary pass and and hope that nothing goes wrong. And we will okay next we'll see in the next release we'll try to fix it. Or the uh, other approaches like let's just block it. I mean, which uh, some organizations are able to do. Uh, but most organizations are not able to because they are under pressure by the management and by the business to release it. Because if you don't release, the business itself is dead. So what do you do? So uh, you have no choice but to, but 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 to live with it. So uh, so neither solutions are neither of these approaches are uh, are uh, uh, are uh, advisable or desirable. So uh, the the approach should be to don't get into the situation uh, either left or right. This is where we come to how to address this. Again, as I told you earlier, uh, there are no silver bullets. There are no magic wands. Uh, we just try our uh, uh, try our best to uh, within our resources and constraints, and uh, uh, how we can uh, optimize and uh, maximize our resources to ensure that we deliver secure code. Uh, there are. Four key issues, uh, roughly, that uh, uh, an appsec manager or app security manager will have to address, uh, or, or CIO or the, or the or the organization, the software organization in general. We need to uh, increase the speed of secure software delivery uh, and reduce the risk of data breach. And the you also have to meet the compliance and the regulatory requirements, internal and external. And we have to do all three and cost effectively. Uh, this is where. Uh, the the point on the left bottom corner gets into conflict with the with the uh, with the other three. So we need to increase the secure delivery. We need to reduce the uh, reduce the uh, risk of data breach, um, achieve the compliance, and all within the constraints of the budget. So uh, 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 an app, appsec security manager or the CIO in general or whoever is in charge of this will have to be a little bit creative into getting the right resources, both budget wise and people wise, to ensure that. Uh, you are able to uh, meet the uh, uh, security requirement. This is another uh, graph which I'd like to look at. Uh, this is what is uh, generally creating all these problems. Uh, uh, this is again a very, very recent study. Uh, only one in four flaws are fixed in the first 32 days. That means 25% are fixed in the first 32 days. Half are fixed in the first six months. Just, just imagine, only 50% are fixed in the next six months. And we, we, we discussed earlier, like when the, uh, uh, the, the, the development team is hit with a set of vulnerabilities on December 1st and with the release date of December 31st, you know what happens. So when you say half are fixed within six, six months means half are still not six, half are remaining open after six months. So, and it, in about 18 months, they see that 75% of the of the flaws are fixed, and still 25% are residual, even after a year and a half. Empower develop, developers. So that's the first thing you can do. I mean, um, uh, train developers. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll approach the training uh, part a little later as a, in, in separate slides. Um, Identify security champions within your organizations. Uh, you know, they are all developers, but, and you have got, you may have developers and security team and, uh, I mean, developers and the testing team. Uh, I'm not talking about the, the, the security testing, they, they, that's the job to do, with, but the functional testing team. Identify a security champion within that. I mean, there are people who are innately interested, developers who are innately, inherently, in, uh, I mean, uh, interested in security. They would have done courses or they, they like it. So, Make them the, make them a security champion. Let them be the mentor. I mean, let let them be the go-to guy. Uh, about, I mean, among the developers to um, uh, to go to for security reasons, or trying to uh, 
uh, decipher what uh, the uh, the report says or decipher what the security thing says soon you'll see the it, it kind of hopefully it becomes a contagion and and, uh, and and the security culture catches on uh, provide checklist to them early in the cycle don't don't i mean they, they don't so uh, a checklist a uh, uh, well thought out checklist uh, sometimes checklist can be a, i mean if it's, if it's a useless checklist they tune out so it has to be properly designed and there's no one size fit all year so the uh, depending on your requirement that this checklist has to be designed and created and delivered to the uh, to the developers so that uh, uh, they can uh, ensure that at least those low hanging fruits or obvious ones are uh, at risk uh, during the development cycle itself and provide early feedback. Um, it is it's it's uh, it's very important that uh, we we saw in the earlier cycle, right? I mean, the by the time they they get the many of the time the developers get the uh, uh, get the uh, uh, get the report, it's 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 too late. I mean, uh, the, the the entire uh, uh, deadline goes for a toss. Uh, the uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a scramble, and invariably the organization is forced to release it without without fixing it. So provide an early feedback. Have a mechanism by which the it could be a technology or a people uh, mechanism, but uh, the, the, the idea is that you you have to have it delivered to them early in the cycle, and focus on how to fix this fix this rather than sending them the findings. The uh, the finding reports with uh, the uh, with, with security we security guys are like to do all those. Uh, critical uh, high and medium vulnerabilities with, with crimson and uh, fancy colors uh, it looks nice for us uh, for them it's just just a histogram uh, it, it does not help them i mean it, it has to be a, 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 a kind of a report uh, or a mechanism right? it's, it can be even be a software or an interactive system by which once once the developer gets it it's, it's easy for him to understand it and 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 fix there should be enough tips in it to fix it the fix should be the to the focus rather than the findings so once you once you bridge that gap we can speak the same language across the fence as, as i mentioned earlier and uh, the the security guy also need to need to need to need to understand the developer's mentality and and when you when you uh, provide him with a with a with a finding uh, ensure that it is uh, what you call it is uh, uh, it is uh, Focus on the fine, uh, fix rather than the finding. I mentioned about training. Uh, there are various types of trainings, uh, which are general security awareness trainings, uh, um, slides and videos, instructor-led workshops, and interactive training. General security awareness training is something which uh, any organization is supposed to do on a mandatory basis. But you need to be very careful when you throw this on a developer. I mean, if you have this stuff like you know. Don't ensure that these are IT, these savvy IT guys. You don't don't put them through a training which says like, uh, don't put your, I mean, a password on a post-it and stick to your laptop. It's obvious. The, you, the moment you see that, the, the developer see that he see tends to tune out. So uh, the the development managers probably should uh, various organizations, various mechanisms of delivering this. So you negotiate with whoever is delivering the training uh, through whichever mechanism it is ensure that only the relevant portion of it goes to uh, goes to the goes to the developers and ensure that in that uh, generic component uh, application security is included in the uh, general security awareness training that you roll out every year uh, then you have the slides and video training these are uh, i mean several uh, e learning tools as we call it e learning tools are available uh, these are uh, useful tools these are quite interactive there are videos in it and it's a little bit more interactive because there's a there's a click and, and many a time you can uh, I mean, there are very useful tools available in the market to, uh, which can be uh, uh, delivered to the uh, developers specifically. Then we have the instructor-led workshops. Uh, these are good ones, uh, uh, but as you know, it's it's this is one in which uh, uh, well, application security expert comes and uh, teaches the developer how to uh, how to how to understand how to securely code and uh, shows him sometimes in many cases there are interactive exercises, there are uh, classroom learning, there are uh, I mean uh, codes are de delivered to the people, and it's, it's it's a good session. But the problem with that is, as you know, it's it's, it's very very whether it's virtual or live, uh, it's it's very very uh, expensive and complicated to deliver uh, because it's very difficult to get the developer out for two weeks, two days. Uh, they they have pushing against the deadlines and you need to coordinate the availability of the instructor with the availability of the n number of uh, developers. It's, it's, it's a nightmare, but it's, it's a 
it's it's useful to have the organization can afford it and you have you have enough bandwidth to do that it's it's it's, it's very useful but it's expensive and complicated to deliver uh, interactive training exercises are, are 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 very good and they are available now these are uh, not just uh, passive training these are uh, training uh, focused on the developers and on to how to how uh, i mean they see a, a badly written code and they see they it is taught how to fix it so uh, they are given a series of codes it can be in any language or specific language they are working on they they see these uh, they see these uh, bugs on it and then they are able to uh, uh, able to fix it and uh, this is very interactive this is this is how they really learn how to fix there are very very beautiful tools available these days uh, available for i mean uh, in this in this uh, segment and you can have competitions friendly competitions uh, the last segment which i which i mentioned has got uh, you can even have a competition run i mean you give a bug to all these uh, i mean uh, expose the same package across the uh, organization and uh, uh, across the development team and then uh, see who fixes first and then see how how good it is so uh, this can be a uh, i mean a, so this can be a positive element to the, the security problem and uh, people generally love it as you mentioned this is a kind of a learning framework we went through those uh, the last uh, slide passive there are passive active constructive and interactive sliding uh, i mean interactive programs uh, the passive being the least engaging and the interactive one which i mentioned being the most engaging so i would uh, recommend series organization to I take that approach or consider that of course you need to invest in uh, suitable application security tools uh, you got the static analysis automated uh, code review tools uh, uh, then you have got the sast id id static scanner this is it's a wonderful tool which is available to developers you are uh, you are doing it within your within your um, in id environment um, so the developer is uh, primarily uh, scanning within his id environment which is fam- which he is familiar with and getting the results instantaneously so he he is doing our work our security guys work and he loves it because uh, he's he's there he's in control we are fixing it early we are catching it early and he's fixing it uh, as he goes and uh, it's so interactive that the the results and the uh, and the how to fix it is all available in many of these uh, uh, packages uh, that deliver this then the other uh, the third part is the uh, the software composition analysis or the third party library analysis or open source library analysis tools um, again a very important component many organizations uh, miss miss out on this one and you saw the earlier scare i mean on Equif- equifax 2 billion dollar uh, uh, problem that was caused by a, a third party library flaw then you got an interactive i asked inter- i i asked interactive scanner then you have the das automated dynamic scanner very common uh, been around for a long long time many organizations use it then you got the various training tools it could be an inter- e learning tool or an interactive tool many such tools are available now process automation so uh, you we hear about devops uh, uh, many organizations uh, have uh, mature organizations have uh, automated uh, uh, ci cd pipeline uh, in place uh, but you will be surprised i mean there are uh, i mean many large organizations which don't have anything in place as such in fact we have been uh, we have seen organization very large conglomerates i mean you have uh, try to build into security into their system and then they realize like they don't have uh, uh, any sorts of processes in place uh, um, so to 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 effectively or uh, productively uh, uh, use a tool you need to have an element of our automation especially in large organizations but some organizations are very very mature i mean um, and um, you will be surprised to see the the developer development guy is embedded in the system very early in the cycle um, so he is part of the design he is part of the design program uh, i mean so the, the during the design phase itself a security guy sits in and uh, at the same time i said even small organization i we work with one one entity here in uh, uae which is not even an application security company they got one app just one app and they are not even a software company it is just software is just one of the channels through which they deliver the uh, deliver the service and they have a wonderful uh, well matured uh, cicd pipeline so it's not the size of the organization that matters so where does security fit into the scheme of things so security is everywhere when you have a uh, i mean a um, uh, uh, devops process uh, you have the uh, the the security guys uh, the, the we are there from the build phase from the design phase all the way to the monitoring phase so this is a kind of a, 
uh, make sure, uh, I mean, snapshot, uh, organization which has got AppSec tools in the pipeline and they got this ID scanner, static scan, scanner, scanners, uh, software composition, web application scanning, training, API integrations, everything built, built, built into the system. Things kind of, they've been able to substantially automate it. This is kind of an ideal scenario. You got to reimagine your approach. What does it mean? I mean, so far from our security, I'm seeing us as, as a security people. So we are talking from a security perspective primarily. So uh, we are, when you do an application analysis, we only look at the bottom part, apps and governance. We have been focused on that. That's not good enough for us. You know, you need to, uh, uh, that, 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 we thought that's our primary job. Uh, again, when I say we, I see myself as a security guy and the, and the audience will see us as a security people. So we need to do a development enablement. So that becomes, that completes a cycle, you know. So uh, I saw one, give you one example of the ID scanner, which is provided to a developer in a, in a, uh, in a, in a uh, CICD environment. Uh, so he's able to scan and fix it as he goes and he feels good for himself. And we are, uh, I mean, so we are empowering them with the tool and the other knowledge. And, uh, they are delivering something which is, which is easier for us to handle. So. Um, so look at it that perspective. So developer enablement feeds into asset governance and vice versa. So that's how we should, uh, I mean, uh, we should see ourselves. Now, why are we doing all this? Um, this is a very, very important uh, uh, slide, uh, uh, slightly pixelated, slightly dated. The cost of relative cost of fixing. If you catch a flaw at the design phase, if you spend one unit, on it and why so why if you uh, catch it at the maintenance phase you spend 100 times assets so that is the importance so catch early fix early this is so important because if you don't catch it early you may end up spending 100 times with the maintenance phase even at testing phase even at testing phase really really little early phase you might spend 15 times as much and if you're at the implementation phase before that, you might spend about 6.5% of it. So this is what is driving um, organizations nuts or crazy uh, with, 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 with no end in sight. I mean, I feel, I feel very, I mean, I, I gave you a good example of a one small, one company with one application doing um, a mature CICD pipeline. We are in the security business. There are a lot of, I um, mean, many a time small startups come with a lot of uh, dreams in place. They come to us and give us that software to test. And we test it, and we see this tremendous world of vulnerabilities. There, they are on a funding spree. If they, the money, the product does not go on to the market in three months or a, or a month, they 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 basically bankrupt because many times it's own, their own funding, and they see this and they see the see these vulnerabilities. They get overwhelmed and they just disappear. I mean, it is I personally know five at know five or six companies which just disappeared after we gave the first uh, I mean, uh, first release. The larger, larger organization can manage because they got they got workarounds and all that. So uh, if you're a small company or a large company, don't don't take it seriously. If you're in the abstract business with an idea, you are trying to come up, come to the market with a with a, with a software idea. Don't ignore security. So if you ignore security, uh, it will catch you later. Uh, so uh, very very important thing to uh, thing thing to I mean keep this in mind. Uh, so this is this is basically the crux of it. This is what I want to leave you with. Uh, have this slide, imprint this uh, the slide in your mind. If you, if you already know, some of you are already in the industry for a long time. Um, so uh, you know this, but otherwise uh, uh, know these numbers. And then uh, I'll come to the end of today's session and we'll move on to the uh, uh, Q&A. Thank you, gentlemen. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to uh, address that. Uh, so, uh, can you hear me? I can see you loud and clear. Okay, sir. So we have some questions from Red Team. So if you don't mind, we would like to ask some questions as well. Absolutely. So the first question is: uh, Do we need to automate the process uh, before we procure the scanning tools? No, absolutely not. If you have a, a process in place, you can make it efficient. I mean, we have organizations which have uh, uh, I mean, used the tools and effectively using it uh, without uh, without automation, without uh, uh, DevOps in their environment. Uh, but uh, DevOps uh, definitely is a force multiplier uh, 
if you get um, 10 units of uh, advantage out of a non automated uh, uh, i mean uh, environment an automated environment would give you uh, 10 times as much it's uh, it's beautiful but um, just because you don't have automation does not <laughs> you know it does not mean that you should not procure tools you should definitely have the required tools in hand, tools tools in hand I hope okay. I answered the question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so the the next question, what uh, we wanted to ask for uh, uh, for developer or programmer, what's your recommendation on security and application security training platform? Uh, there are several platforms, but what what uh, platforms are we we work with a uh, with a with a with a platform called. Uh, uh, security um, uh, security labs it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful tool uh, and uh, many organizations in the uae and outside and across the world are using it so if somebody wants to i uh, mean uh, know more about it uh, please reach out offline to us uh, to greenmethod.net or uh, somebody in a, in a manning a booth uh, will be more than or you can uh, even reach out through rare red team will be happy to provide that it, this is a very interactive tool where they teach you how to uh, uh, they they show you bug i mean uh, vulnerable applications and then teach you how to fix it yeah. and uh, and um, I'll let you how to fix it sure sir uh, the next one is uh, what's your suggestion on training model sir should we go for instructor led trainings or online cbt trainings uh, it, it has to be a mix of both as i mentioned earlier it's it's quite expensive uh, instructor led trainings are expensive if you can afford it you should have it there is no i mean instructor led led trainings are, are are extremely good once a year uh, or uh, you should do that uh, but if you can afford to do that it's it's it, it because there's a person who can write uh, i mean uh, right there and answer your question so every yes. type of training that is going its own benefit but i cannot give you a question either or but i would say uh, do a combination of both uh, have an instructor led training but but uh, since it's only once a year people will forget but if, even if you have an instructor led training you should have a uh, i mean a, a, a web based training and online training yeah. you, you should not ignore that like yeah. online documents per se absolutely you should have that because that's what keeps you there and that should be fed on a monthly basis because uh, yes, if it is if it is uh, delivered in, in in one block uh, people tend to forget it so uh, have a uh, instructor led for i mean training if you can afford it but a web based training uh, or a, a document based training uh, do it on a regular basis okay sir uh, and the last question from us is uh, any suggestions on uh, instructor led online trainings for application security and uh, shift left approaches you have red team here i mean <laughs> there are you can also approach a red, red team also has i understand some uh, good uh, instructor led trainings are available i uh, depending on where you are i mean i'll be happy to uh, i mean if you reach out to us we'll be happy to uh, i mean uh, recommend red team as well as uh, if there are other regions of the world where they need the training so we'll yeah. be happy to uh, um, uh, assist, assist them with that there are various types of trainings uh, models available for and focused trainings available for the various uh, requirements in the app second arena that we provide Oh, yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, so we have one question from the audience. How can we secure our database from data breach? Ah, uh, that uh, I think that is a separate <laughs> separate session for that. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't think I can I can answer that question in this particular uh, particular session. So uh, again, we'll be happy to take a. <laughs> if I had a one more answer for that, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so <laughs> let us. <laughs> let us uh, uh, let us park it for now but please do reach out to us and we'll we will we will assist you with uh, how to address that question but this is what yes. we do for a living so uh, let's just see if the audience have any more questions so guys do you have any more questions for manoj sir uh, do you want to conclude this topic on any last few words sir Uh, I'm fine. My 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 slide, my last slide was my uh, was was my. That, that's what I wanted to leave you with. I mean, uh, fix early, find early, uh, ensure that your developers are trained uh, uh, trained properly. Don't 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 forget that it it costs you hundred times as much uh, if you don't if you don't find it if you if you find a bug late. So, any um, uh, developers, empower your developers. Find some I um, mean security company in your organizations. Uh, that will be new. Require the proper tools. So this is all what I need to, uh, what I would like to uh, leave, leave, I mean, leave the audience with. Thank you very much. Thank you all. 
Okay, thank you, sir. and we also like to thank you from the Red Team Hacker Academy for having you here, spending your time, and uh, giving us all a uh, pretty good insight on this topic, sir. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we would also like to have you on our uh, future sessions, sir. Thank you, thank you. We have a session which is taken by Phil, uh, Philippe, sir. So you can move move on to the session. Let me tell you the session name. Give me a minute. Uh, inside the mind of a threat actor beyond pen testing. So the session is live now. You can move on to that live. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, uh, thank you, guys.